Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another Stamp Timber exclusive collaboration video. This is the unbelievably anticipated Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Stamp Timber collaboration. This set, I every year it sells out in unbelievably flat, fast. Last year was, I think, a record. I know they've stocked up big time, but this set is one and done. It will not be restocked. Unlike all of Tim Holtz's regular Stampers Anonymous stamp sets, never retire, with the exception being the Stamp Temper set. I will have a link to the set in the description box below the video. And yeah, not taking any bets on how fast this one goes. It's a fabulous set. It's Christmas themed this year. So the set, just like all the other Stampers Anonymous sets, it is red rubber on cling foam. So I've removed the foam insert from my Misty so that I can stamp with it. And I am stamping it onto some uh, Craft Distress Heavy Stock. So this is darker than like Nina Desert Storm. It is also much heavier and can handle like water and techniques and all the things. So I'd use my anti-static powder tool and I'm stamping this large, um, you know, Santa Claus climbing up into the chimney image onto the heavy stock with VersaFine Clair Nocturne ink. And I inked it up and I stamped it multiple times to get all the detail because there's a lot of detail in this image. And then I coated it with Wow's Clear Matte Dull Embossing Powder. So I get the raised bit of embossing, but it ends up like once the second it cools down, it goes dull, not shiny. So it doesn't look embossed, but it gives those raised edges, which is really nice because I'm going to watercolor these with my Distress watercolor pencils. I posted a video before this showing how I made this little palette. I'll have a link to that at the end of this video if you want to check it out. To note... I filmed this video right after I did this palette, so everything is still wet in the palette. It's not going to always be like this. <laughs> you know, it's going to dry out and they're going to harden and I'll have to like reactivate things with the water. But right now they're still like fresh, <laughs> which is actually kind of nice. They, you know, because I could just pick it up with a brush and just immediately paint. I don't have to fiddle with like, yeah, adding any water or anything. So I've got my image heat embossed on the craft. I specifically chose this craft heavy stock because I knew the picket fence white distress watercolor pencil would show up really nice against this, which it did. Love how that looks. So I just used my little um, detail water brush to paint this entire image, which honestly didn't take that long. I've sped this up in editing, but for all the detail and everything, this isn't a difficult image to color, but it's also one of those images where you don't need to color it, honestly. You could do some fun little techniques and in ink blending and then just stamp over it. Or um, I'm going to show in a little bit, um, just stamping it on the inside of the card. And when I did that, I was like, oh, you know, you could just ink this up, like ink this up with like rustic wilderness, distress oxide ink, stamp it onto just white cardstock, add a sentiment and you're good. It would work. It would work. So anyway, I painted all of this with the various colors of these distress watercolor pencils. You could also use regular watercolor, um, inks, all the things like whatever, you know, works for you for coloring. So once I've got everything colored, I was going to leave just the sky area like as is because I really do like this craft heavy stock. I need to use it more often. I don't know why I seem to hoard this one over the other, the cream and the white heavy stocks, but I decided I still wanted to paint the sky area since I had the palette sitting right here, you know, everything's ready to go. So I'm going to use a larger paintbrush and just fill in the entire sky area with pretty sure this will be the prize ribbon um watercolor pencil so this took a little bit of time just you know getting around those edges but that's also why I heat embossed them so I didn't have to worry about like painting over the lines so I just filled it in I didn't worry about getting like a perfect smooth um you know blend here like make it like flat I kind of like the texture it gives in the end it gives it just that little extra something almost like the idea of like clouds and whatnot too so got that all done and then once this is dry which didn't take very long I'm going to use a little stencil that comes with this stamp set 
and I'm going to use some grit paste. I just have this little tiny like sample container size of grit paste. I'll have a link to the regular size. But I also have press and seal on top of this to keep it from drying out because I've actually had this grit paste for over a year, maybe two years. I can't even remember when I got it. But anyway, I applied the grit, place, grit paste with a palette knife over this stencil. So it is going to create a very snowy background. So applied that over the stencil. Once I've got that applied, I will clean off the stencil, clean off the palette knife, put the, put the press and seal back over the jar. And then I decided to add a little bit of glitter, not much, just some Distress Rock Candy Glitter. I have it in a glitter duster. I've shown this in videos in the past. The glitter duster just kind of puffs out like the lightest amount of glitter. And because it's rock candy Distress Glitter, it is not super sparkly. It's got a bit of sparkle to it. It's kind of its own little unique thing and it's perfect for snow. So really hard to show on camera, but the, the little bit of sparkle in it does pick up in the light. So I'd realized my, my, my little glitter duster is starting to run out. So I just scoop more from the jar because a jar of rock candy glitter, there's a ton. It's not a good lifetime supply. So scoop some more back in there. I was just working over coffee filter for this first card. And yeah, you just dust on there. It'll cling to the paste while, you know, before the paste can dry, it clings to the wet paste. And then when it's fully dry, I just flick the background a couple times and any like excess glitter pops off and it's good to go. So again, subtle, but it gives it a little something. So then I've got um, just some red cardstock. And while that grip paste is drying, I'm going to white heat emboss one of the sentiments from the stamp set onto this piece of red cardstock. So anti-static powder tool, inked up the stamp with some white pigment ink, and then I'm going to heat emboss this with some white embossing powder. So coated that, melt that with my heat tool, and then that I just fussy cut out with scissors. You could also, because of the like size of it, it you could just trim it with a paper trimmer, you know, or die cut it with like a sentiment, like a rectangle sentiment wafer die. I just fussy cut it because I thought it'd give it that little extra something. So trim that out. And then my card base is going to be Simon's smooth white cardstock. Uh, A2 size. My brain just stopped. <laughs> A2 size. So top folding A2 card, four and a quarter by five and a half. So to give you an idea of this, this one stamp will do a A2 card. No problem. So I'm inking up the stamp with Simon's um, Aspen positively saturated ink and stamping that. And that's where I was like, oh, this looks really nice. Just, yeah, stamping it in color. You know, there's all that detail. It's just perfect. So I stamped that and then I'm going to stamp another sentiment from that set with the uh, Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. Once I've got that stamped, I trim down my background to be smaller than my card. It was four and a quarter by five and a half originally. And I trim this down so it'll be smaller than my card front just to give um, that nice white frame around it. And then I'm going to coat the back of this with Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it gives it that little bit of dimension that I love. And I also put the foam tape on the back of the sentiment. So get that popped into place on the card, pop the sentiment into place, and that finishes off the first card. So I had to do a second card because I really love the snowflakes in this set as well. So I took another piece of that same craft heavy stock. This time I taped it down to a hard board with a bit of painter's tape. And I'm going to use a flat brush and the Distress Watercolor pencils in my palette here. And again, these are still wet. So if I was going to, like, when I do this in the future, after this, like, these, this palette has fully dried, I would just put a few drops of water into the wells of colors I want to use and let that sit for a while, you know, and get everything creamy again. Because painting this background while these are creamy like this chef's kiss <laughs> just look how just thick and smooth and fabulous when I, like this background it was one of the easiest backgrounds I think I've ever done and I was like oh I wanted to just sit and like keep painting backgrounds it's <laughs> like I have all these colors sitting here but not enough time so that's what I'll do in the future though is just add some water let it you know soften everything up and then paint because yeah I was able to go back and forth you know and create this ombre blend with these colors and love it. I'm pretty sure I used uh, black soot, prize ribbon, peacock feathers, 
and salvage patina, I think, are the colors I use. I haven't labeled the colors yet in this palette, but I'm pretty sure those are the ones I used. And yeah, love it. So I let that completely dry. Once this is dry, I peel off the painter's tape and I just kind of pull it back against itself so it doesn't tear the cardstock when I pull it off. And then once I've got that off of there, um, again, made sure it was completely dry before I put this into my Misty. And then I'm going to stamp those three big snowflakes onto that. So I get those kind of centered where I want them. I'm going to heavily use my anti-static powder tool because I don't want embossing powder clinging to anything but the stamped images. And then I'm going to stamp these snowflakes with white pigment ink. And I'm going to ink them up and stamp them a couple times because they're quite detailed. So once I've got those stamped, I'm going to coat those with white embossing powder as well. And then heat emboss those. And then... Because I have the stencil with this set, that's what I use. But another option would be to do splatter. I was fighting with my urge to do splatter. <laughs> but I was like, I really like the stencil. And the, using the grit paste, it gives it, you know, a bit more um, texture. So it's kind of fun. So I melted this with my heat tool, like the stamped snowflakes. Melted the embossing powder with my heat tool. And then again, I'm going to use that stencil with the, this is the opaque grit paste. There was just, like Tim just released with a distress line. I think it's snowfall grit, grit paste. I got to get my hands on that because that probably would have been perfect because I think there's glitter in that snowfall grit, grit paste. So if I remember, I'll link to that <laughs> in the, with the supplies because it's worth checking out. But I just used what I had and then I'll add um, the rock candy glitter with my, my glitter duster. This time using my splat box, which is normally what I use. That just kind of contains the little excess bits of glitter when using this. So dusted that all over. So there's a little bit of shimmer to those um, stenciled, you know, snowfall things. And then let that dry. And then I have the inside of my next card base here and I use some post-it tape to mask off where the score line was. Lined up the snowflake stamps. I put some scrap paper into my Misty first, like on top of the card base. And I've inked up the stamps with three different Distress Oxide inks. So Salvage Patina, Prize Ribbon, and Peacock Feathers. And I'd stamped it onto the scrap paper first so that I get the second generation on the inside of the card. So not as intense, but I've got all the detail and the color. But it's not as dark so I can easily write over it. So then I trimmed down my background, popped that into place with foam tape as well as the sentiment. And that finished off these cards. So like I mentioned, this set is very, very limited edition. I'm sure there's going to be something somewhat similar, but it's always different. Um, in Tim's release, there's going to be a Stampers Anonymous release, I think in a week. I'm not 100% certain, but the Christmas release is coming. So I'm looking forward to that too, because he's always got fabulous stamp sets coming out. So stay tuned for that when that comes. And like I said, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll link to the set and all of the supplies I use. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch my videos. Please thumbs up and comment. Subscribe if you haven't. I very much appreciate it. And it always appeases the robot overlords. <laughs> and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.